Hello, hello everyone. Thanks to introduce me because uh, all the time I forget to put the first slide about me. So I assume that people know me, but for some reason, but it's not like that. So today I want to talk about uh, my experience, let's say my recent experience about uh, UX. I'm not gonna talk about explicitly UX, but I want to talk about what kind of uh, challenge opportunities we have uh, uh, in them while we are developing a new application in uh, basically my company, where uh, uh, we, have, uh, we are in the immersive tech uh, industry. So it means a lot of things. It means augmented reality, virtual reality, mixed reality, all kind of reality. And also artificial intelligence, specifically deep learning and machine learning. So in this, uh, big uh, and uh, kind of abstract uh, uh, industry field, there are a lot of new challenges that are related to UX. I want to show you where I see challenges and opportunities. Then it's up to you that you are more UX designer to think about what kind of, uh, uh, let's say, new opportunities in terms of disrupting UX and UI interaction is, uh, is going to be. We start with uh, um, an example, because uh, okay, because the first thing that I that I feel when I talk about augmented reality and artificial intelligence is the hype. There is a lot of hype about that, and to measure hype, sometimes I do, I do this game. I Google something to see how much is recurrent, uh, like the search of a specific topic. And this kind of a search uh, game comes from, my, from a previous game that I was doing all the time. And it's about The Smiths. I don't know how many people know The Smiths, the band, the British band. It re was really popular in the 80s, but it's still like a lot of fans. Um, every year, there are people that are Googling about the reunion. And it's like 20 years that is happening. So if you search every year, there are people that are trying and understanding if when they are going to be reunited. We don't know. The same thing is happening uh, correspondently in tech. There are a lot of uh, hype expectations about what kind of, uh, what's going to be next. It happens for years about Magic Leaps, Magic Leap and HoloLens 2, also HoloLens 1, and a lot of dev different devices. For augmented reality, specifically now, the hype is about the Apple Air glasses. So if you Google Apple Air glasses, there are people that are searching every year when it's going to be released, what's going to happen, it's going to be it's constantly changing this. And people also release a lot of concept design with the most improbable design of glasses. They're really awkward. The same thing happens also for artificial intelligence. So now everyone is on artificial intelligence or blockchain. You can change, you can choose whatever you want. And um, by artificial intelligence, yes, there is a whole lot of hype, a lot of uh, epic fail. They comes also, this is a, this one is a bit representative of the situation now. This one is a, the most popular now meme that you can find in artificial intelligence. It exactly represents the situation. A lot of expectations, but of course, still a long way to go. But at the same time, and uh, of course, there are uh, fantastic example of what's happening. For example, this guy, they upload a picture of, uh, of course, because there are big, big limits, and uh, you know that the face recognition is still uh, a li there is a lot of a big challenge on it because of uh, ethnical uh, limits that the system are not trained well, so it doesn't recognize fairly every, every kind of ethnical group. 
And this one is, is a joke, but it actually represents well the problem. So there is a hype, but at the same time, there is an opportunity. And today we're talking about opportunities because next to the hype, there is a concrete opportunity to solve and to use uh, augmented reality and uh, um, artificial intelligence without waiting the same graal of uh, Apple, Apple AR glasses or whatever uh, general artificial intelligence that is coming anytime soon in a dystopian world. So the opportunity, let's say, let's put some number, just a number, then we just go directly and jump directly into the concrete uh, use cases. One number is this one. Actually, this one is really pessimistic, it looks like. Goldman Sachs, they love to be pessimistic. So it's 95 billion by 2025. PwC released a new report and they talk about one trillion. So the same time. So it's really difficult to forecast uh, um, uh, the market for virtual reality, augmented reality. And this is the problem. So people, they invest a lot. There are many companies working on that. But at the same time, we actually, we don't know what kind of uh, uh, investment we should put on this technology. We know that it's gonna work. And technically, uh, the advance are really uh, significant. But we need still to, to make things that they uh, give worth and value to these new technologies. And this is a uh, part of your work. You need to, you have the technology, but you need to change things and experience in order to uh, use as much as possible the new technology. So we talk, uh, we're gonna introduce and talk about a few concepts, and I show you a few uh, examples. They are a whole animated GIF. So don't take pictures, take videos because otherwise they don't work. The first concept is speciality. Speciality is the new concept. So far, you work with a 2D interface. Everything that you do, mainly when you do mobile applications, are in a 2D plane. The, the problem with the speciality is the fact that actually the new UX and the new UI work in a 3D world. Is something is a concept that was introduced by HoloLens, and then it was uh, taken by Magic Leap, and now it back also to the new HoloLens, and uh, and this one of course are the most interesting uh, scenarios. So HoloLens two, now you you can really interact in a really natural way, and I think is the big difference between a uh, 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 let's say a traditional mobile application and uh, a mobile device like that, let's call mobile because it's still a mobile device, is the fact that of course everything happens in a 3D world. So all your job, all your work uh, is gonna happen and need to be related to the concept of spatial computing. The fact that uh, all the UI that you place has to stay in a 3D world. The same thing happens with Magic Clip on the right. They introduce with the new Create 1.3, they introduce this avatar. They basically show you how to interact with the physical world. Because the problem is that actually, when you were in a mobile application, you know exactly where you can tap, and where you need to touch, or what kind of uh, interaction you can have, because everything is limited to your screen. When you are in the physical world and you have a device, it's really difficult to tell you where exactly you should tap because unless you put a big arrows like that. But if you try to over, let's say, describe the interface, of course, you kill the newelty and the, and the opportunity to use the spatial um, uh, information in a more effective way. The other concept that I'm interested to talk is context. Context is the fact that now, with the augmented reality and machine learning, you are able also to understand what's around you. And this one can affect a lot the UX and UI. Because uh, you can uh, create, uh, for example, UI that are related to just 
what's around you. A, it doesn't understand, for example, the camera, what's around you, and, and use that one to basically change the menu, change the interaction. You can also select or like make appear or disappear menu based on what you see. And uh, this one, a few examples. This one is a, is a project that we worked a couple of years ago. It was the first implementation of Google TensorFlow with Unity on iOS. It's still like challenging to do this, this stuff. And actually, actually, no one is doing anymore because you don't need it. At the time, it was kind of crazy hacking. So in this case, you, with a camera, you recognize the object, and some UI appear contextually to the object that you see. So everything is related to the object around you. Working with that uh, makes some assumption that you are a, three, a physical world. But in this case, in, it's different from HoloLens and Magic Leap. There is no 3D information. Everything is, uh, is controlled by AR kit, AR core. So everything is really is limited in terms of how you place things. So there is no 3D information. But at the same time, you are able to place UI contextually with the object in a way that looks like almost is a 3D uh, environment. Uh, body tracking is something really interesting because the context is the fact that you are able to recognize people and also recognize their skeleton on their body and use the information to create interface. In this case, of course, it's just a simple one. There is just the skeleton. But there are a lot of uh, mm, interesting by retail uh, companies and fashion brand about using that one to create virtual try-on. So you, are, you go in front of a mirror and basically you can uh, try whatever you want. Or you can do with your camera as well. So this kind of uh, uh, machine learning uh, uh, advancement, of course, uh, make it easier to create application where you can interact based on the f oh, uh, you can interact with other people based on the fact that you know exactly uh, where the person are in all the basically the body, also the expression as well. This kind of tools, as I said, are really really in, in progress because still uh, is challenging to be done. And this one is another one. This one is occlusion. So the problem is that augmented reality so far has no occlusion. So the, all the augmented reality assets, they appear in front of uh, anything else. The idea here is from Niantic Pokemon Go is the fact that the, all the characters, all the assets, they may place physically in a way that uh, uh, they know exactly where they should place in terms of depth. Also, they can be hidden by real uh, object. This one can be applied to UI, for example, as well. So you can have UI, they can be hidden by people. So you have a person also, for some reason, you want to hide a UI, you can do that with ambient occlusion, with the occlusion, sorry. The other concept is location. So now there is a new, uh, a lot of interest in location-based uh, augmented reality. It means that basically there are companies like Google, Facebook, and uh, also small companies like uh, Scape Technologies here in London, that they are uh, scanning the, the world. They are scanning the world in a way they are creating a correspondent augmented reality world where basically they match our real world. And the idea is the fact that you can place digital assets in, a, in the physical world in a way that they match exactly where you are. This one is an example by Nexus Studios. I really like when competitors, they do better than us. So I appreciate. This one is really good. They made uh, basically, together with Scape Technologies actually, they made this experience for, in Dallas for NFL, where basically you place the player in the stadium, you see. And this one is happening for real. It's not post-processing. It's not a video compositing. You, with the camera, you, you see that player exactly in the stadium, in top, at the top of the stadium. This one is a Snapchat, the landmaker's uh, Snapchat uh, 
new functionality. Basically, a lot of uh, uh, world famous buildings around the world are being uh, scanned by Snap, actually by the user of Snapchat. And uh, Snap, uh, they collect all this data and they create a point cloud representation of this building. So now if you go to, for example, Buckingham Palace, you are able to place filter that they stay on top of Buckingham Palace. And they track well Buckingham Palace. So this one is a real, it's not video compositing, it's a real application. And all this application, of course, they uh, change a lot of how people can interact with the physical space. Because now you can have a UX and UI. They are completely related to the location where are you based. This one is another uh, concept and another technology is uh, Azure Spatial Anchor is pretty new, it's still in preview. We worked recently with Momentum for a future decoder, the, the Microsoft event uh, at Excel, and we make this application where the Spatial Anchors means the fact that you can place any object in a, any physical space, and that object is anchored on that space uh, for a long time, like a few days. So every time you open the application, you still see that object there. So it's a con really strong concept where basically you can anchor digital things into the real world. And they stay there. The other concept that's interesting for us, and I want to show you, is the rendering. Rendering now with 5G is another big hype, 5G. But it's concrete. 5G allows us to speed up uh, the uh, traffic between uh, devices and server in a way that you are able to render with a qu unprecedented quality uh, on mobile. And this one opens a lot of opportunities in terms of complexity, for example, the UI complexity of the assets that you are using, complexity also the UX that you want to implement into a mobile application. This one are a, a few, a, a few examples. This one is a, is a volumetric capture that we made with Microsoft and uh, a dimension studio here in Wimbledon. And, uh, the idea, and this one is a correspondent version for web. So basically the big problem is so far there wasn't not possible to use this technology on web because of course it's really heavy. And it means that the traffic to download and play this one in real time was uh, impossible to be sustained. With, this, uh, with 5G, it will be possible to render this kind of quality in 3D in, uh, in, uh, in any application in real time. And this one is another Microsoft uh, concept, the remote rendering, actually also in game engine you find. So the idea that you render everything on a server and you show the result of the rendering on a mobile device, as I said. So if that, even if the, most, the crappiest uh, mobile device can render the quality of uh, the, the best, the, the most expensive device, just because the bandwidth and the network can allow you to do. So this one is a, is a model of the HiSys ISS. Uh, um, station, they was made by 40 million polygon. This one is impossible to be rendered locally from, by any device. And related to that, of course, is, as I said, the network problem. The network problem that is related, it made possible to do, it made possible now to create experience where you drag and you show things that it was not possible so far to appear just because of the, the needs of a, a network that you need. For example, this one, it was in Korea, in a Korean stadium. It appears a, um, a, dra a dragon in, in the stadium. So with the, your camera, you can see that in real time. And this one appears in real time because it's rendered in real time as well. So this one is all of me. So you are able to basically uh, potentially streaming uh, people and doing video conference, just um, showing uh, people that they are capturing in real time, and you can place any, anywhere. So this one is a, a 2D layer that is appearing on my, 
in my office. This one is the most, most complicated thing. So this one is, is a potential future application that you can think about. You have a video, and uh, this one is a, is a test that we made. It's based on a research by University of Washington. And they do, they capture the video, and just from the video, they create the 3D correspondence, see, of that to the video. So there is body tracking, there is 3D estimation, all machine learning things, and they are translated into a 3D representation. So imagine in the pubs, people, they can see uh, shows or whatever in 3D in real time. This one, of course, change completely how you design this kind of experience. So it's not anymore like uh, live streaming, 2D live streaming on Twitch or YouTube or TV, but it's a 3D live streaming where basically what you see on camera appear in 3D in, uh, on, on a table, for example, or I don't know, real scale if you want. And uh, of course, is really pretty heavy to be done for real. So it's still a, a, a big work in progress and concept that it may happen sometime soon when we're gonna have enough power and technology to afford to do that in real time. But it's something where you can think about a lot. This last one is uh, Rick and Morty at the, the recent uh, Adult Swim Festival in California and they basically create experience where people can uh, sing with them, just uh, 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 capture in real time, and then, uh, of course, stream as well. So this one is the all related to the network capabilities. The other thing that I want to show you is uh, the try-on. Try-on is uh, about try-on clothes, so I, I add also furniture because I think uh, so I can implement as a try-on. And, uh, and it's based on the fact that with machine learning now, deep learning, you are able to track and do post estimation really well. It opens a lot of opportunities in terms of how you can create a, a retail application. So now you don't have any more just a menu of uh, selection of items, but you have also a selection that you can match exactly your, your, uh, your body or the body of someone else that you're trying. These are an example by uh, Wana Kicks. I don't know if you try. How many of you tried all of, some of these? Raise your hand. Yeah, yeah a few ones. Really. So this one, uh, and, uh, and they are pretty good, actually, now. It's something that happens for years and years, people trying to companies try to uh, break this, uh, this idea in a way. The one of kicks he made really well on this. Then there is another concept with about hair. This one is Wayfair, talking about try on furniture in your home. And this one is Mac on YouTube. So if you want to test the cosmetics, makeup, you can do on YouTube. So this one opened a lot of other opportunities in terms of how you can uh, design applications that are related to, to try on. Uh, filters. Filters is uh, one of the last one is the, is about uh, basically making uh, uh, things on Instagram, on Facebook, and on Snapchat. And uh, as well, this one is a completely new uh, kind of application, really limited and really challenging, and where I'll, I see a lot of struggling for UX UI designer because it's really limited, and actually people don't know how much they can do that on it. And it's, and it's really challenging, but at the same time, really, the opportunity is big. You have a filters by Joanna Jakowska here, Posemoji, they create animation, cat and dogs, of course, why not? They should not have the filters. Here it's me with Jan, the CEO of Holomi, a Snap office. And the last one is web. Web is, uh, is about, of course, uh, opportunities that you can have to do all the things that I talk about, but on web. And it's still challenging, because of course you can 
we start to, all of us, we start with marker-based solution. You have just a marker and you place their asset uh, in this way. But then appear also marker-less solution based on slammed algorithms. In that case, this one is a Legoland experience by eight wall. And this one is a quick look on Safari. So as you can see, we scan a, a Nike shoe and we place together with the real one into the, the space. This one opened a lot of uh, other opportunities by the fact that on web you can reach you a huge audience. So it's not related to the challenge and the restricted audience that you can have, for example, on Magic Clip on HoloLens. So conclusion, we, we saw a lot of different uh, aspect and challenge. I hope that you find some inspiration about uh, what's next and where you can find a lot of uh, uh, interesting opportunities in the immersive tech uh, experience. So uh, this one I live with, uh, this one is Adobe doing some uh, experiment with uh, AR AI. And that's it. Thank you. But one quick question oh, yeah, sure. before you run off the stage. Yeah. So the, the question, our top voted question was um, a worry about amplifying bias through AI. Is that something that you're worried is happening? Uh, I mean, the bias is, is happening a lot. It's really significant. The problem now is try to fix the bias because I think it starts with a huge bias because all the big companies, I think they were really more concerned about making work in terms of measure metric but the concern was way less in terms of uh, how many people can use effectively that technology. So now they are, everyone is trying to fix. They are creating a lot of ethics group and about uh, making AI correctly, and making work correctly. So it's part of the, it's not, uh, unfortunately it's not where I'm, I, I can spend my time. I hope that I can use the technology that they are fix it. So I try to actually find where they, are, they work at best. But this is a big challenge because it's not, a, it's not easy task for, I, I know, for that companies. Yeah. <laughs> Definitely not. Well, no. thank you so much. Thank you. Thank Can we have you a too. huge round of applause for Marco Marchese? Thank you. Thank you.